So the genesis of this arrangement dates back to around 1998, 1999, when I was doing my undergrad at Radford University, uh, Southern Virginia. A fellow student introduced me to this pianist by the name of Murray Pariah. More specifically to this album he did, or two albums he did, was St. Martin in the Fields Chamber Orchestra, where he did all of Bach's keyboard concertos. And this was the first piece I ever heard. This Allegro was the, the very first piece I heard from Murray Pariah, and uh, I was hooked. Concerto was wild. Uh, I remember pretty early on in the writing process of Apoptosis, Greg had kind of mentioned in passing that he wanted to take on this Bach piece. And I remember thinking it was like really ambitious, but at the same time, I kind of like treated it almost like a super dense like work project or school project where I, I'm just gonna deal with that when it comes in because I was already prepared for the work that was gonna come in and make it happen. So one of the biggest challenges I knew we were gonna encounter is that the, the, the concerto uh, or the Murray Pariah St. Martin of the Fields version is very dynamic. Um, when you have these acoustic instruments, I feel like you can you can have a lot more dynamic range than you can if you're in a metal band blasting on 11. So here is the full score that I worked from to uh, arrange this. So as you see, so at the bottom here is the piano, and what we did is because we have uh, we both play eight strings, we were able to play pretty much the full range of the piano, and uh, so we just split it. How I did, I split it up each hand is going to be one guitar. So uh, in the beginning here, uh, I'm the pianist's right hand and Mike is the pianist's left hand. So when we had instances where it was just like one little Piano, when the piano is playing really quietly with just one string section, um, I made the creative, you know, artistic kind of decision to make those classical guitar duets. So we could thin everything out, we could bring everything down. Um, fortunately, Christina Sensenjin was coming in to do The Colors of the Currents with me, so it was the perfect chance to enlist her uh, to help me out with the Bach as well. For me, it was such an honor to be part of this project, uh, to get to play music by one of my favorite composers of all times, on classical guitar, uh, with a legion. Very special and such an honor, and um, Greg, uh, to play with him was uh, so much fun. Um, he's a great musician, great classical guitarist, and producer Devo Toro. Uh, one of the best producers I've ever worked with. So, um, yeah, just very happy and grateful to be part of this. the demo for Bach piece and I'm listening through it and you know first listen I'm already like wow this this is a lot I, I, I this is gonna definitely be a, a huge piece uh, to take on and I remember trying to find like common elements like trying to find any kind of like repetition anything that I could like hold on to that'll give me some kind of because you know most classical music is written thematically but it, it's very linear so you're going from movement to movement to movement and that was more or less how it was with this piece, except after doing like a deep dive into it, you realize the themes, a lot of the themes that reoccur in the song are actually played in different keys. So the whole thing was a little bit more in depth than I was expecting, I think. Um, and I was expecting a lot. So the arrangement process for the concerto was, was beyond grueling. To put this in perspective for people that follow the band, um, when we did subdivisions and animate, those were done back to back in about like four or five hours. Right? When we did roundabout, that was about a week. 
a little less than a week to do. The Bach took me about a month uh, to get all the pieces, all the moving pieces in, and we still ended up changing stuff in the studio. So, for those of you who don't know, we tracked Concerto during the Apoptosis recording. Um, this was the very first song that I tracked when I came into the studio. Sick as a dog, first couple days when I came in and knocked it out of the park. And this was my first day in, and it took me 10 hours to retract this. So I hit the studio, it's my turn. Um, and I remember wanting to knock this song out like first, right out the gate. I, I just didn't want this like a monumental, you know, piece of music obligation, what have you, like looming over the whole session because you know, it was obviously a big challenge and everything had to be just right. And I just, I wanted to get it out of the way, right, right out the gate. So we started with that track, first one that I did. I had my, my notebook with all of my sheet music and all my notes and everything ready to go. And basically we just dove head first. And basically we got through the whole song. And uh, once the thing was completed, and, and it took most of the day, and it took most of the session for sure. But once it was completed, it was just one of those you know, I mean, I was relieved in one sense of it, but then, you know, I think any artist, when they, you know, spend a lot of time on something and they finally see their contribution, uh, kind of their their portion completed to the song, and then eventually the entire song being completed, it was just like a nice sense of satisfaction. Like, whoa, I, I did this. This is something originally that, you know, I had seen as a massive undertaking or I had seen it as a, uh, you know, a huge project or something that was gonna be really daunting and stressful and am I gonna be able to meet the uh, expectation on this and to see it come together was, was brilliant. Yeah.